Hello! As you can see, my M. Graham paints are everywhere and I really need to organise these into a better container because this just isn't going to cut it. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you will have seen my other M. Graham videos, but if you haven't, I'm going to actually put them all into one playlist and I will link that down below if I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> I originally started with 14 colours out of the M. Graham range that fit into this little palette that I had in my collection. Here are the original 14 that I chose. I already had the Dark Zazim Purple, that is the first one I ever got, and then I bought the other 13 over time, and then I found two more that I really wanted to have which weren't in stock the first time around, so they were sitting in there. And then a lovely viewer sent me all of these ones, and there is another 13 of them here. And after all of that, I then got another one, and this is a cobalt green. So now I have 30 half pans full of M. Graham paints. You can see that one needs to be refilled. So what I'm going to do today is rearrange everything into a much more organized fashion. And to do that, I ended up, and I wasn't going to, but I did. <laughs> I ended up buying an empty palette from Meaden. I actually got a second one. And I also bought two really large palettes with the ones that hold 48 but those are for another video because I'm actually going to sort out some of my other brands of paint namely my Schminkers and my Daniel Smiths because they are also all over the place and I think I might need some larger palettes for them so <laughs> those are future videos I think I'm going to do a mini series just on reorganizing some of my paint brands because I've ended up collecting more over time and they're kind of lying around. Half of the Schmincke ones I haven't even squeezed out yet so yeah that's going to be a video all on its own but because it was free shipping if you spent over X amount I ended up with four palettes and so one of them is going to be for my M. Grahams. So I think I just wanted to start fresh with a totally clean palette and I'll just shove everything to one side. So we have a lovely cardboard box here and a fresh palette. I have actually pulled this out because it's got my thumbprint on it. <laughs> this one is empty but what Meaden so fantastically do is they send the half pans in a beautiful bag like this. So I have one, two, three and four of them. I have got so many half pans now but I'd actually pretty much run out of them so I'm really happy about that. I always use half pans for things so they will stay as spares and I will use them for filling up some of my other palettes that I have here. Okay now that is really weird. I was just looking at this going well where the heck is bismuth yellow because I've got azo yellow here but I'm missing one and I'm thinking surely I didn't put this anywhere. Somehow and I do not remember doing this, it is in this palette. How weird is that? Was I demonstrating that it had a magnet on the back? I don't know, that's just most bizarre, but I'm very happy I found that one because that is not one that I have a tube for, so <laughs> yes, glad I've got that pan back. <laughs> Some of these pans are just filthy. I don't know how I always manage it, especially with the M. Graham paints. I don't seem to have this issue so much with other paints, but for whatever reason, as soon as I touch them, I always seem to have paint from usually that purple on my fingers and it gets on others. So I think I might just give them a bit of a clean up just with some water and a cotton bud here. Just take off some of the grime because yucky.
it's always such a really difficult time making a decision as to what the order of colors should be. Oh my goodness. I always struggle with this. I think I'm actually quite happy with it. I think I'm going to keep most of them as they are. I mean, <laughs> eventually you just have to make a decision, don't you? But I think I will switch around the teal and the turquoise. Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep these as they are. Otherwise, they all seem fine to me. I mean, maybe the Quinn Gold could go with the Yellow Ochre, but then that kind of stuffs up all of the rest of the order. The Purples I could have moved down here, but I'm not, I'm just going to leave it, okay? I'm making a decision, <laughs> but otherwise I'll never do it. And I'll just sit here for hours going, um, do I put this one here? Do I put that one here? Huh. It's not that big of a deal. It isn't rocket science and it really doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'm just going to make a decision and stick with it for now. I've got some pans that need more paint in them but I'm going to fill them up after I've put them in the box because it's really hard to pick them up when the paint's wet so that is what I'm going to do. I hope I don't regret that <laughs> decision either but let me get this purple in there before I get it on myself any more than I already have. Now I'm looking at this as they're quite loose and that is easily going to take 13. One moment while I change my mind <laughs> because that's what I'm good at doing. And I think I might put the yellow ochre in and then they have the yellows together like that. So that's what I'm doing. Yellow ochre is going in there next to the quinacridone gold. 13 fits just so much better than 12. And I'm also going to put the black down next to the blue and just have the four brown colors in the middle. So those are all squished in and they're not going anywhere so I'll put that back in. That's quite satisfying looking at that. Now I've got all of the cobalt colors except for the cobalt blue and at the moment that does not seem to be in stock at the art shop so I may end up getting the cobalt blue eventually in which case I will move that black back up there and I'll put the cobalt blue down there but otherwise I have no intentions on buying any more unless someone sends me more and then I'll just be going ah oh, then I've got to redo another palette but no I think I'm good with all of the colors I really don't need any more I keep telling myself that <laughs> and one day I might believe it in here I can put a travel brush I will find one a bit later because currently I can't see any of them at the moment. So what I'm going to do is draw up a nice swatch card to put in here so I will get back once I have prepared all of that. I always keep my cotton paper off cuts. So my, one of my favorite papers is Kansen Moulin Dua 300 GSM 100% cotton cold press paper and I've got some large sheets of it so whenever I cut them down I usually end up with some very wonky little pieces like this. I was having a look through to see what I had and this piece fits almost perfectly in there so I will cut it down and this will be my new swatch sheet. So it's going to take me a little while to rule this up and everything but let's see if I can speed that up like magic. Ta-da! I found a brush so I will use this one to swatch all of the paints out onto this card which I almost got perfect except for the turquoise because I'd forgotten almost to switch those two around. Whatever, it's good enough. Now I'm sure many people will do their swatches on cheaper cellulose paper and I've done that in the past myself but I found that I prefer to do my actual swatches on the same sort of paper that I'm going to use for my paintings because it's so much easier to get a better representation of what the colors are going to look like and as you can see the paint just goes down so smoothly on cotton paper it's just so much nicer than cellulose and once you start using cotton it's really really hard to go back I know I've mentioned that before a few times but it really is difficult and I just love this particular Kansen Moulin Dua paper which I think was mostly discontinued but from what I gather you can still get it in the UK so fortunately before they discontinued it completely and sold out a bit everywhere I managed to hoard a whole bunch of it so I have plenty of paper and I won't be running out anytime soon. 
but I also find it's such a great way to use those little offcuts that really are too small to do anything useful with other than do swatching on. So for me, I don't think it's a waste. For me, I'm actually using every single piece of paper that I have in my collection, including all those little scrappy bits which can get thrown away sometimes. So yeah, I just think it's a great way to use up scrap pieces of paper and make beautiful swatch cards as well. Hopefully I won't have to do another swatch card for a while, so this one should stay in the box for quite a long time. Unless of course I decide to get that cobalt blue, but I don't think that will be for a while yet. And here we have it, a pristine palette for five minutes. <laughs> you know this is going to get messy very quickly. I finished painting out all of my swatches. I think my favourites are that cobalt violet and that cobalt teal. Those are so beautiful. The cobalt green doesn't seem to have quite as much in the way of granulation. The cerulean blue is pretty granulating. There's granulation in the ultramarine. A little bit in the anthraquinone blue. But definitely in the teal and the violet these two are the most granulating so yes this is my full palette as you can see there's a lot of blues and a lot of yellows but I think it's quite nice there are subtle differences between them some of them are more transparent than others for example and also I find that when you start making mixes if you have a lot more colors like this you can have infinite mixes rather than you know just a handful of them so there's good things and bad things for having larger palettes of paint but I always prefer to have more because I like to change my colors up I don't always like to paint with the same ones every single time so what I'm going to do is a painting I'm going to fill these some more with paints but I think I'll actually do the painting first because it is much easier to take the drier paint than it is to take the really wet paint and I really want to do a painting today so I've had this photo sitting on my Pixabay favourites list for a while it's a really pretty kingfisher and I decided to draw this out I grabbed a piece of A3 printer paper to draw it and I just did a fairly basic drawing like I didn't try too hard to make it super realistic or exactly the same it did take me a few times to get that body shape right though he was a bit fat to begin with <laughs> but never mind I got there eventually and I did find though that my kingfisher looks a lot more like a kookaburra which is also a kingfisher but has a slightly different shaped head and I realized I'd drawn a kookaburra head instead of the shape of the head in the photo but whatever it's my own and I just traced it out onto some Moulin Dua paper I have an old A3 pad that I'm trying to use up and I've only got one sheet left and then I just started going in with some of the colors I wanted to do a fairly abstract background so I'm going in with quinacridone gold and cobalt teal and a little bit of the darker quinacridone rust I ended up painting quite a lot of the bird in that cobalt teal so I did change my mind a bit on the background especially in that bottom right hand corner but I just splattered some paint on and let it run and then I went in to the bird using a lot of the cobalt violet and the cobalt teal for this also some of the phthalo blues and a few other colors I think some of the reds and oranges the naphthol red in particular but these paints are just so beautiful I just can't get over them they're just so saturated with color and they also layer really well so they're kind of the best of every world <laughs> you can put them down really dark to begin with or you can dilute them a bit and build them up I was doing a combination of both I did use the quinacridone gold quite a bit as well to tie in the bird with the background colors I just thought it would be nice if they merged together a little bit rather than being contrasting which you could also do but I just wanted to go with a fairly limited palette like I didn't use all of the colors in my enormous palette here but I did focus on that cobalt teal which has to be my favorite M. Graham color it is absolutely stunning I just can't get enough of it at the moment so I do apologize if I just use a lot of cobalt teal lately and yeah I just went over this and I kept painting it until he turned out nice and bright and I was happy with them also every time I use this paper I'm just reminded as to why it's my favorite it just takes colors so well and the paints just blend in so beautifully without leaving harsh lines that you often get on cellulose paper oh and the brushes I'm using are silver brush black velvet in various sizes I tend to use these 
when I'm doing nice paintings. I don't use these for anything other than watercolours because they are quite expensive brushes, especially in Australia, and they're also really hard to get. But I really love them and they are wonderful to use, so I highly recommend them as well. I might have to explore these further in a future video. And I kept forgetting I was filming and I kept putting the phone on camera so that you could see that I am just working off a small image there. I was too lazy to print it this time. forgot the final thing a label there we go now it's mine so here we have it the final box full of M Graham paints they're very very juicy and very very prone to tipping everywhere so I'm going to have to find a nice safe flat place for these to lie open and dry as much as possible over the next few days without the cats getting their little paws into them and walking lovely paw prints throughout the house. It's not the first time that's happened, but hopefully it will be the last. I have learned my lesson on that one. So herein lies the end of the saga of the M. Graham watercolour paints. They were everywhere. Now they're all beautifully stacked into this lovely paint tin. I can fold them away and they can join the rest of my rather large watercolour collection. So you haven't seen yet what I have in store for the Schmincke paints, but that's a story for another day. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video today, and please don't forget to check out that playlist of all of my other M. Graham paints so you can see how I first acquired them and some of the paintings I've done with them, and the final result, which is all of these colours together. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you all again really soon. Swatch you later. Bye.